The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club was formed by a group of World War II veterans way back in 1948, and in the seven-plus decades since, they have evolved significantly from their origins as a counterculture organization with as few rules as possible to an actual gang that can be considered an organized crime outfit. Before diving into the video, hit subscribe for a front row so that you won't miss out on our interesting content and be a part of the adventures. As far back as the 1960s, the Angels were making headlines for their criminal activities, including an alleged gang rape in 1964 and the murder of teenager Meredith Hunter at the Altamont Music Festival in 1969. Members of the organization have continuously asserted that they are only a group of motorcycle enthusiasts who have joined to ride motorcycles together, to organize social events such as group road trips, fundraisers, parties, and motorcycle rallies, and that any crimes are the responsibility of the individuals who carried them out and not the club as a whole. But most of the Hells Angels members carry out widespread violent crimes, including drug dealing, trafficking in stolen goods, gun running, extortion and prostitution operations. Yeah, well, we all do know that. But still, do you know who are the most vicious Hells Angels members out of all? If you don't, then stay tuned because in this video I'm going to show you the most ruthless Hells Angel members who are convicted of death torture. What would they have probably done to get such a violent punishment for their crime? Let's find out. According to the Department of Justice, three members of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club were convicted of murder in aid of racketeering. Jonathan Nelson, Santa Rose, and Brian Wayne Went were found guilty of killing Joel Silva, who is also a member of Hells Angels. They thought that he had been creating problems for the Motorcycle Club and taking part in conspiracy to commit murders. They shot him in the back of the head and disposed of his body through an illegal cremation at a nearby funeral home. The jury deliberated for little more than a day before returning the verdicts. The verdicts bring to an end a two-month trial that centered on the words of three informants who'd served various roles in the Hells Angels, including two former members who became informants after they were severely beaten by members of the club. A third man infiltrated the club as a prospect while secretly working for the FBI. The case was part of a massive FBI probe that targeted 13 Hells Angels, though one died in a motorcycle crash shortly after the indictment was filed in 2017, including some of the Bay Area's most prominent members, as well as the president of the club's Boston chapter. Nine others are still awaiting trial on charges pertaining to Silva's July 2014 murder, as well as unrelated assaults. Nelson was the Sonoma chapter's president, and Santa Rosa, also known as Ott, is one of the longest tenured Hells Angels members ever, with a half century under his belt. Went was the Fresno Charter president. Most of the defendants belong to the club's Sonoma Charter, including Silva, who authorities say was targeted for murder due to his increasingly erratic behavior. Silva disappeared in July 2014, and he was one of three Hells Angels members to vanish from the Fresno area around that time, according to prosecutors. Attorneys for Nelson, Went, and Ott all attacked the government's case as a flimsy hodgepodge of unreliable witnesses, coupled with inconsequential FBI testimony designed to smear the Hells Angels and make mountains out of molehills. For instance, attorneys countered testimony that the defendants' phones placed them in the area of Silva's killing by saying the group made frequent trips to the Fresno clubhouse all the time. Went has been in jail since the indictment, while Nelson and Ott have been out of custody. They were both remanded to Santa Rita Jail in Dublin on Wednesday, where they remain pending sentencing. All three face possible life sentences, to be determined by U.S. District Judge Edward Chen. Silva was a former sergeant-at-arms of the Hells Angels, who prosecutors say crossed a line when he threatened to kill another club member named Sweeney during a trip to New Hampshire for a major motorcycle event. Consequently, several others, including Nelson, Went, Boston's charter president, Christopher Ranieri, also known as Rain Man, and others plotted to kill him, according to the prosecution's lead witness. A former member of the Richmond Clubhouse, the witness Joseph Hardesty told investigators he hosted the meeting at his Antioch home, where Nelson agreed that Silva needed to be eliminated. The plan was for Ott to lure him to Fresno, where Went shot him in the back of the head. Defense attorneys seized on the fact that Hardisti admitted to lying in one version of that story, telling authorities he was present for the shooting when he wasn't. Hardisti left the group the following year. Still haunted by the role he played in his friend Silva's death, he testified. 
When he left, he was beaten severely, and his motorcycle was taken back. During the trial, prosecutors delved into the history of the Hells and Gels, nodding the group had held major funeral events when other members died, but made no such effort to do so when Silva disappeared. In Steed, he was quietly voted out of the club at a meeting more than a month after his disappearance. Another alleged member of the Silva murder plot, who burned Silva's pickup truck afterwards, according to authorities, was a man named Robbie Huff. He disappeared the following year and is still considered a missing person. Hardisti testified that Huff once told him once that the Hells Angels had an illegal crematorium lined up for illegal body disposals. Though he said it was at a pet cemetery and that Hardisti could call a number and say he needed a pizza in the oven if he ever wanted to use it. During trial, the owner of a Fresno funeral home testified that a Fresno Charter Hells Angel, Merle Hefferman, pressured him to do an illegal cremation for months before Silva's murder, and called him the day after Silva was allegedly shot to tell him some guys were bringing a body over. He said two young men, including one of Hefferman's relatives, proceeded to bring a body and placed it into a cremation oven while he was walking to a convenience store. The owner testified he didn't tell anyone the story until eventually confiding in his wife months later. He said he was terrified to stop the cremation, but took steps to ensure the body's remains didn't mix with those of another cremation already in progress. Prosecutors say the Silva murder plot was hatched because he had fallen out of favor with other club members, in part because of his growing drug problem. The final straw came in June 2014, when Silva threatened to murder a well-respected member of the Salem clubhouse over a perceived personal slight. Ranieri and Wendt decided Silva deserved the ultimate consequence for his actions, and Nelson signed off on the plot. On July 15, 2014, Nelson arranged for Hells Angels Sonoma chapter member and former president Russell Ott to take Silva from Sonoma County to the Fresno Hells Angels Clubhouse, where Silva believed that he would address the grievances Wendt had against him. Soon after Silva arrived at the clubhouse, however, Wendt shot him in the back of the head. His body has never been found and the government will establish at trial that the body was illegally incinerated at a nearby crematory. According to Nelson's defense team, the evidence is based on cell phone records, law enforcement testimony about the Hells Angels, and a principal informant whose identity remains a mystery, at least to the public. The discovery indicates that this individual does not have any direct or personal knowledge of Mr. Nelson's alleged role in the murder of Silva nor does he claim to have specific information that Mr. Nelson authorized the murder. Nelson, who bailed out of federal detention shortly after he and 10 others were indicted in late 2017, is currently petitioning for a release from Santa Rita Jail in Dublin. He has been there since September 2018 when the government filed a superseding indictment, making Nelson and several others eligible for a federal death sentence. But the feds recently decided to take the death penalty off the table for this case, and Nelson is petitioning to get out of jail once again. A federal judge is set to rule on Nelson's motion for pretrial release on July 23rd. Prosecutors have vigorously opposed the motion. As president, Nelson is responsible for each of the violent acts committed by Hell's Angels Sonoma chapter during his tenure. He is responsible for the beatings, the armed robberies, the assaults, the extortion, and the witness intimidation alleged in the superseding indictment, as well as the numerous other violent crimes committed by Hask members that are not set forth in that charging document. Nelson was a father, son, coach, and small business owner, and someone who is well-respected in the Sonoma community, not just the biker community. Almost everyone was willing to do anything for him. He said the government secured the indictments as Sonoma. Hells Angels were organizing a charity run to benefit Santa Rosa fire victims suggesting the timing of the case was designed to sully the group's reputation. Silva was not the only person killed by the Hells Angels and then disposed of at Yost and Apple Webb Funeral Home in Fresno. Richard Vilda, age of 28, was gunned down in the early minutes of Aug 21, 2017, in the 800 block of East Culver Avenue in Orange, California. He was a drug dealer and a member of a Costa Mesa gang who was supposed to send a cut of proceeds to Johnny Martinez the alleged boss of the Mexican Mafia's Orange County chapter. The funeral home's crematory manager told prosecutors that three other bodies were illegally cremated at the unassuming white-gabled funeral home on T Street. T Phipps, the manager, 
did not know whose bodies were incinerated, but told prosecutors that Hefferman directed him to help dispose of the bodies. The time the bodies were cremated lined up with the disappearances of Hell's Angels members Robbie Huff and Art Carassis, who went missing in 2015 and 2016. Huff participated in the cover-up of Silva's murder. Prosecutors said Hefferman's attorney identified the fourth missing person as Juan Guevara, also a Hells Angels member. Phipps's testimony was consistent with call records between him and Hefferman, which showed that he was contacted by the Hells Angels member right around the time of the disappearances. The nearly identical pattern of contact between Hefferman and Phipps near the time of both the Silva murder and Huff disappearance is powerful corroboration for Phipps' grand jury testimony. Evidence was shown at a news conference Monday, September 25th, in San Diego, after San Diego County. District Attorney Summer Stefan announced grand jury indictments of 17 defendants in connection with a violent attack against three black men by members of the Hells Angels biker gang in Ocean Beach earlier this year. But Hefferman's attorney shot back at what they called prosecutor's last ditch attempt to tie Hefferman to additional body disposals he was not charged with. Although federal probation officials recommended less prison time than the 87 months, prosecutors argue that the maximum term is justified and cite Silva's family, who say they waited for days on end for Joel Silva to call home. They also said that they were unable to have a proper burial for Joel and have no place to visit for his memoir. The most chilling and emotional aspects of this crime was that at the same time, Joel Silva was making arrangements to have a birthday party for his 15-year-old daughter. Hefferman was making arrangements to cremate his body. James A. Bustamante, the prosecutor argued that Hefferman has met all court conditions since he was arrested and that it is the first time he has been convicted of a crime. Bustamante described Phipps, the Austin web crematory manager, as an unreliable witness who could not pass an FBI polygraph test. And he said prosecutors would have indicted Hefferman for the other three disappearances had he been more credible. He added that Hefferman was a victim of domestic violence at the hands of his father, who threw him out of a window at six months old, rupturing one of his kidneys, and that his stepfather beat him with a belt and punched him in the face. Bustamante said Hefferman was later homeless in downtown Fresno at a young age before being befriended by the late Mike McGarvin, founder of the Pavarello House. Toys and bikes are always brought to the Pavarello House and Santa Clara streets in downtown Fresno during Hefferman's holiday season toy run. Bustamante also said Hefferman suffers from a myriad of health issues, including lymphoma. Hefferman's friend Michael Thompson calls Hefferman a community leader who works tirelessly to help assemble 3,000 bicycles for kids every year. Another friend, Tim Patents, says Hefferman is a special person who has helped thousands of thousands of children with his incredible generosity. Everyone still wonders, how can a man like this do such a terrible crime? It's a fact that he didn't kill Joel Silva himself. But still, he was supporting them by helping them to cremate him. Hefferman still faces unresolved obstruction of justice charges, alleging that he played a role in Silva's cremation. In conclusion, the killing of the Hells Angels, Joel Silva, gained a great deal of attention once again in 2022, when three members of the motorcycle club were convicted of his murder, while Rainier was convicted in May 2023 of conspiracy to commit murder in aid of racketeering along with multiple related charges, peer the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Northern District of California. At the time of this writing, he has yet to be sentenced, but faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. The convictions were the end of an explosive trial in which the accused criminals had their actions laid out in a court of law, and as the prosecution's case unfolded, other brutal crimes came to light with details even emerging of the gang's grisly method of allegedly disposing of the bodies of those they killed. In October 2023, prosecutors alleged that former Fresco chapter member Merle Hefferman was instrumental in disposing of the bodies of Silva and others in a local crematorium, which the gang came to know as the Pizza Oven. Levy Phipps, the manager of Fresno's Yost and Webb Funeral Home, testified in court that in 2014, the bikers had told him to leave the business incinerator open and was held at gunpoint as they used it to dispose of a body. In total, prosecutors alleged that the gang attempted to use the crematorium to dispose of the bodies of four murder victims. Thus far, 
Hefferman has been sentenced to just four years in prison for obstruction of justice. How can these people even think about disposing of a human body in a crematorium? Joel Silva was once a member of them, and still they did this to him just for a threat that he made. And that wraps up today's content. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.